Thank you, Alexander String Quartet. And you guys look wonderful. <laughs> it is now my honor to introduce the chair of the California State University Board of Trustees, Robert Linscheid, the presiding officer for today's event. Good afternoon. Is this mic on? Good afternoon. That's good. Boy, it is right colorful tonight. I was talking to some of my colleagues. We're going we're to go downtown tonight and make reservations for, for dinner, I think. This is a, what a way to do this. But good afternoon and welcome to everyone to the investiture ceremony at San Francisco State University's 13th president, Leslie E. Wong. I bring greetings on behalf of the California State University Board of Trustees, and I'm pleased to join you today's celebration. To open uh, today's ceremony, it is my pleasure to introduce Ms. Cristina Leo Santos, I'm sorry, an SF State alum in biochemistry, who will uh, sing our national anthem. Cristina. seated. Thank you, Ms. Leo Santos. That was a beautiful rendition. Now to help us reflect on the spirit of our gathering today, I'm honored to introduce Father Stephen Prevett, President of the University of San Francisco, who will deliver the invocation. Father Prevett. So let us pray. O God, except ourselves, we have no other prayer. Truth is among your most generous gifts to us. This calling to be unique and uniquely yours. And we know from stipple on trout Seventy shades of green, more than a hundred periodic elements, birds and beasts innumerable. You love best what is varied, different, and ineffably itself. So one task of learning. Like Monet, we must set up 14 easels to trace 
what sun and rain do to the color and contour of a cathedral. Like Mendel or Crick or McCormick, we must train our eyes on common things, peas or corn, to see what is shared, the pattern invisible, the providence beneath. Like O'Keefe, we must study a garden of blue petunias to paint the night sky. Like every writer ever born, we must imagine what it is like to be another. There are many moments of sacred time. Let these years of learning be among them. From this blossoming labor, let us know both resolution and resolve. Use all our ordinary efforts to find the just way, the open heart, our truest self, and you. We are grateful that you have sent Les Wong to join our community. We ask your blessings on his time of leadership. May it be fruitful for the university community, satisfying and sustaining for him. We pray that San Francisco State will always be a sacred space of learning, lit by your wisdom, your mercy, and your grace. We ask these blessings, O word in whom our wordiness dissolves, grateful that we have no prayer except ourselves. Thank you, Father Prevet. On this historic occasion, I would like to begin by recognizing some of our distinguished guests. Would my fellow members of the California State University Board of Trustees please rise when I call your name and I ask the audience to please hold your applause until I've read all their names. Trustee Roberta Actenberg. Trustee Ken Fong. Trustee Lupe Garcia. And Trustee Lawrence Norton. Thank you each for joining us today. <laughs> Would representatives of the Chancellor's Office of the California State University who are seated on the stage today, please rise when I call your name. And once again, the audience, please hold your applause until all have been recognized. Chancellor Timothy White, General Counsel Christine Helwick, Executive Vice Chancellor and Chief Financial Officer Ben Quillian. Special recognition also, Chancellor White. This is his, uh, his first investiture uh, of many more to come. We want to offer a special greetings to you. Yeah. Now, would all of the university presidents seated on stage please rise after I call your name, and I'm sure the audience will hold their applause until I finish. Ruben Armagnana, President of Sonoma State University. Admiral Thomas Cropper, President of the California Maritime Academy. Alexander Gonzalez, President of Sacramento State University. Tomas Morales, President of California State University, San Bernardino. Leroy Marishta, President, California State University, East Bay. Eduardo Ochoa, President, California State University, Monterey Bay. Michael Ortiz, California State Polytechnic University, Pomona. Mohamed Kaomi, President, San Jose State University. Joseph Shealy, President, California State University, Stanislaw. John Welty, President, Fresno State University. Judith Gregg, President of Notre Dame Demur University. Dorothy Leland, Chancellor of the University of California, Merced. Father Stephen Prevet, President of the University of San Francisco. And of course, a familiar face to all of you, 
Robert Corrigan, President Emeritus, San Francisco State University. Please. Go. Now, would the members of President Wong's cabinet who are seated on stage please rise when I call your name? Sue Rosser, Provost and Vice President of Academic Affairs. Nancy Hayes, Vice President of Administration and Finance and Chief Financial Officer. Robert Nava, Vice President of University Advancement. Joe, Joe Velcourt, Interim Vice President, Student Affairs and Role Management. Patricia Barcher, University Council and Chief of Staff. Thank you all for being here today. Now, would the deans of the San Francisco State's six colleges please rise when I call your name. Linda Aubrey, Dean for the College of Business. Betsy Keene, Interim Dean of the Graduate College of Education. Ken Montero, Dean for the College of Ethnic Studies. Don Taylor, Dean of the College of Health and Social Sciences. Paul Sherwin, Dean of the College of Liberal and Creative Arts. And Sheldon Axler, Dean for the College of Science and Engineering. Thank you all for being here today. <laughs> Additional uh, people at the uh, platform party I'd like to introduce now. Adenike Hamilton, President of the Associated Students Incorporated, San Francisco State University. Douglas Roberts, Director of Institute for Public Policy and Social Research at Michigan State University. John Gumas, Chair of the San Francisco State Foundation Board. Leona Bridges, a 2012 inductee into the San Francisco State Alumni Hall of Fame and the Honorable Willie Brown, former mayor of the city of San Francisco and San Francisco State's 1981 Alumnus of the Year. I know I should have done the mayor last because I wasn't finished. <laughs> Alejandra Morge, Lorette, uh, Poet Laureate of San Francisco State and Professor of Latino Studies, <laughs> Lorna Cheng Hill, San Francisco State Supervisor for Inter Undergraduate Admissions, and Lawrence Hanley, Academic Senate Chair, Associate Professor of English. Now, let's congratulate them all. And on behalf of President Wong, thanks to the students, faculty, staff, alumni, and special guests who have made time today to be part of today's celebration. In honor of President Wong, we will recognize a number of individuals who will provide official greetings on this historic occasion. But before I turn over the microphone, let me offer special greetings on behalf of the California State University Board of Trustees. Now, some of you know that my wife and I recently located, relocated to San Francisco. Very quickly, we become welcome to the world-class city of San Francisco and consider San Francisco State to be our home campus. We trustees are ever so proud to have Les Wong as our leader here at San Francisco State. Les and Phyllis Wong are the greatest gift we could have given to this campus and this community. Please, as a community, embrace their leadership and support their initiatives. I know all too well they are student-centered, and I, on behalf of my colleagues on the Board of Trustees of the California State University, wish to welcome them to San Francisco. It is now my pleasure to recognize Leroy Marishta, President of California State University, East Bay, who will provide greetings on behalf of the California State University Presidents. Leroy. Good afternoon, everyone. 
I am pleased to have the honor of representing my colleagues, the presidents of the other 21 campuses of the California State University. In officially extending greetings and welcoming Leslie Wong to the CSU system as president of San Francisco State University. The job of a CSU president demands awareness of and responsiveness to the needs of students, faculty, staff, and the community, all within the context of a public university in service for the public good. President Wong's vision and aspirations align well to the traditions of San Francisco State's commitment to social justice, equity, diversity, and focus on student success. He brings to the campus a strong history of successfully leading a public university. He has earned the trust and respect of students, faculty, staff, and alumni by establishing successful partnerships with community leaders and advocating effectively in regional and state legislation. I have had the privilege to know President Wong for over 20 years. He is a man of integrity and honor and a leader who keeps his commitments and respects his colleagues. His focus is on students and the importance that a university education provides in making a meaningful difference in their lives, for their families and communities, and for the world at large. Throughout his career, President Wong has successfully led insightful and ambitious initiatives. His leadership has been characterized by student-centeredness, candor, transparency, and energy. Knowing less and having had the privilege to work at this great university for most of my professional life, I was pleased to have the opportunity to encourage him to seek this presidency, and I actively advocated for his candidacy. The university has acquired an exceptional leader. I know his expertise and vision will greatly benefit San Francisco State, the region, the California State University system and beyond. President Wong and Mrs. Wong, on behalf of your presidential colleagues, we extend our heartfelt congratulations on this auspicious occasion as we look forward with anticipation to the unfolding of your vision and aspirations during your tenure as president of San Francisco State University. Thank you and welcome President Wong. Thank you, President Marista. On behalf of the faculty of San Francisco State University, I'm pleased to recognize Dr. Lawrence Hanley, Chair of the Academic Senate. Greetings, greetings everybody. On behalf of the Academic Senate of San Francisco State University, I welcome President Les Wong to the dynamic, exciting, innovative, rigorous, robust, and rambunctious academic community that is San Francisco State University. At the heart of every great academic achievement, individual and collective, is one key value, collaboration. Collaboration among colleagues, collaboration across the campus, collaboration between past and present, collaboration between classroom and cutting edge knowledge, and between intra and extramural communities. Already, President Wong has demonstrated a keen and formidable gift for cultivating these powers of collaboration. Even as we extend this most genial welcome, we, the faculty, staff, and students of San Francisco State University, henceforth known as Gators, <clears throat> look forward with confidence and optimism to his leadership of this great institution. And now in my Jesuit trained Latin, forgive me please. Salve, President Leslie Wong, ad nostris communitatus delectus. Welcome President Wong to our beloved community. Thank you. Thank you, Chair Hanley. On behalf of the staff at San Francisco State, I am pleased to recognize Ms. Lorna Chang Hill, Supervisor of Undergraduate Admissions. Lorna. Thanks. 
Good afternoon, President Wong, Chancellor White, trustees, colleagues, and friends. My name is Lorna Hill, and I'm honored to be here on this significant occasion and bring greetings to you on behalf of the 2,000 staff members from our campus. Dr. Wong, our staff extends a warm welcome to you and to Mrs. Wong. Last spring, I had the privilege of serving on the Presidential Search Advisory Committee to select our new president. We were ecstatic when, Dr. when we learned that Dr. Wong accepted this challenging job. After reviewing 60 resumes from outstanding ad academics from across the nation, you would be hard pressed to find a committee to form a consensus on any one candidate. But we all agreed that Dr. Wong was not only the best qualified, but that his character and demeanor would be the best fit for our campus and for our students. During your initial seven months on campus, we have appreciated the manner in which you have reached out to our staff and demonstrated your interest, your support, and appreciation of our roles. We have great trust and confidence in you, Dr. Wong, and on behalf of our staff, we welcome you warmly as our 13th president. We look forward to working with you to support and fulfill your vision for our campus. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Chang Hill. On behalf of the students, Ms. Adenike Hamilton, president of the Associated Students Incorporated of San Francisco State University. Adenike. Good afternoon. I am honored to be here today to commemorate the investiture of President Wong. President Wong, Chancellor White, faculty, staff, students, and distinguished guests, this afternoon I bring greetings to you on behalf of our university's 30,000 students. Our campus is undergoing a major transition in terms of student population. Our campus is comprised of a diverse and energetic student population, and our undergraduate population is also reflective of California's population. And it's interesting to note that almost half of our freshman class comes from Southern California. More students from outside the Bay Area are selecting SF State because of its quality, academic programs, and the opportunity to live and learn in one of the great cities of the world. I, myself, am one of those students. Our campus is also going through a physical transition with many new projects underway that will further cement San Francisco's place as a leader in higher education, and it's amazing to have President Wong leading that charge. President Wong brings with him a fresh perspective, ideas, and the sort of out-of-the-box thinking our campus needs. He's plugged into all aspects of our campus and is the right person at the right place and the right time to further elevate SF State. President Wong, we the students also love that you're so visible on campus. We see you in the Cesar Chavez Student Center at City Eats, stopping by our student organization offices, athletic events, serving as the head spirit leader, motivating athletic teams, and yes, even stopping by noise complaint, our campus dances. Our students are so fortunate to have an engaged leader like President Wong, who from the first day here has made it a point to reach out to students and to get to know the people that the university is here to serve. President Wong, on behalf of the students, we are ready to work with you in making SF State a greater university. We are proud to welcome Dr. Wong as the 13th president of San Francisco State University. Thank you. Thank you, Adenike. I'm certain those Southern California students you identified are all giant fans. On behalf of the San Francisco State University Foundation and chair of the foundation board is San Francisco businessman John Gumas. John. Thank you, Bob. And if any of you are wondering, these are very warm. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is John Gumas, and it's a real pleasure for me to be here as an alumnus of this great institution as well as the chair of the San Francisco State University Foundation Board of Directors. And it's a pleasure to be part of this investiture for our 13th president, Dr. Les Wong. Shortly after Dr. Wong's appointment last spring, he reached out to our foundation board. He expressed how excited he was to be part of San Francisco State 
and how much he looked forward to working with us on the board. And I can tell you that President Wong is a man of his word because he's been an active member of our board ever since, and we're very appreciative of that. His energy and his vision of the board, his passion for increasing our fundraising capability, as well as building the university's endowment, have re-energized all of us. It's also clear to us that Dr. Wong appreciates and values our input and advice. He is clearly committed to our students, our faculty, and our staff, and he's equally committed to building and expanding relationships with our elected officials, our school districts, our community members, and our business and civic leaders. In fact, we saw a great example of this recently, his leadership in the community with, with his engagement of uh, Proposition 30. So we thank Dr. Wong for that. Let me add that the Foundation Board is also energized about Mrs. Wong. Her passion for the students and the university is absolutely contagious. And I see you right there. <laughs> and it's because your smile, and that smile is what brightens our day every day. So we thank you as well. We are extremely fortunate to have such a dynamic couple leading our university. President Wong, the directors of the San Francisco State Foundation Board want to know how much we appreciate the impact you've had on all of us and our university in just seven very short months. Our future looks awfully bright with you at the helm. So on behalf of the San Francisco State Foundation Board of Directors, many of whom are here today, we wish you a heartfelt congratulations on this special day and we look forward to your leadership and working with you to take our university to the next level. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, John, and thank you for your work on behalf of the university. On behalf of San Francisco State's more than 200,000 alumni, Ms. Leona Bridges, a member of the San Francisco State Alumni Hall of Fame, will speak now. Leona. Good afternoon, President Wong, Chancellor White, alumni, and distinguished guests. As a proud alumna, I am honored to be with you this afternoon and to celebrate your investiture. Let me also share with the audience that I had the privilege and the honor of serving on the Presidential Search Committee. And let me say, the committee chaired by Trustee Actenberg made an excellent choice in selecting Dr. Wong. This afternoon, I bring greetings on behalf of over 200,000 alumni. We have San Francisco State University alumni all over the state of California, the United States, and internationally. In fact, Dr. Wong, I bring you special greetings on behalf of the 600, uh, 600 alumni in Taiwan. They are still talking about your wonderful visit to Taipei last fall. On behalf of the alumni, we want to acknowledge and thank, the, thank our alma mater for the best education that we could receive. Thank you for the education that have blessed us today and always. The faculty and staff of this university has nurtured us and shaped us into the leaders we are today. San Francisco State University's commitment to quality education, coupled with the commitment to social justice, has provided our students, and many of whom are first-generation college students, with the best education in the class of this uh, university and many universities across this country. We make our community and our nation very proud of us. As graduates of San Francisco State, we have given much. We have been given much by this university and the faculty. And we have the responsibility to give back to our alma mater. And we want to help and mentor the current students and the future alumni of this university. Our alumni, we are so, admit, we are so excited with your appointment. And we stand ready to, we stand ready to serve and we are committed to you and the future of this university. We are ready to assist you in connecting and reconnecting with the alumni, both locally and globally. President Wong, we wish you a long and productive presidency, and we are pleased to receive you, Mrs. Wong, and your family. We, we wish you blessings and good speed. Thank you, and go Gators. Thanks, Leona. 
Now, on behalf of one of the world's finest cities, the Honorable Willie Brown, former mayor of San Francisco, sponsor of San Francisco State's Willie L. Brown Jr. Leadership Institute, and a member of the San Francisco State's Alumni Hall of Fame, Mayor Brown. Thank you, Robert. Mr. President, Chancellor White, all these other presidents that are up here, <laughs> these other chancellors that are up here, but this marvelous collection of students who have come to participate and listen and enjoy and share with you this extraordinary moment. And I am one such student. Yes, I speak on behalf of the city and county of San Francisco. Francisco, because our mayor is on his way to become an Irishman in Cork uh, <laughs> for the weekend. And then after that, he's going to become a Frenchman in Paris. Uh, and then back to Chinatown for Chinese. But in the meantime, he has authorized me since San Francisco State extended the opportunity to me in 1951, I was an immigrant from Mineola, Texas. Uh, <laughs> I came out here, graduated from Neo Color High School, Mr. President, and I was going to Stanford for purposes of becoming a math professor. I went down to Stanford. Before they told me the price, they looked at my resume and said, you're in the wrong place. Uh, <laughs> No way you're going to be able to enter Stanford. And it was a moonlighting counselor from San Francisco State University, Duncan Gillies, who said, and they're right, but I know where they'll take you. San Francisco State, the old campus over on Buchanan. And I became a member uh, almost instantly of this marvelous family. And I have remained a member of this marvelous family. And I got the opportunity when Robert Corgan was the president and I served as both speaker and mayor to really interact with San Francisco State and do what Leona says, and that's uh, give back. And I'm telling you, uh, Leslie, that I am going to be in Jerry Brown's face <laughs> full time on behalf of this university. <laughs> As, as this great university so richly deserves, the city and county of San Francisco is indeed blessed. There are five or six major educational institutions that has more than 200,000 students and employees as part of that operation in this city. And believe me, that's a quarter of the entire population of this city. In San Francisco State, with its huge student body, with its activist campus, with its diversity, and with the kind of leadership that it regularly provides in interacting with the city as an educational institution, you are in charge of something that's extraordinary. And as I said to Steve Previtt earlier, if they'd gone four days, one of the two of you may have been Pope. Congratulations. <laughs> now we're all eager to read his column on Sunday, aren't we? <laughs> Check and see if your name is in there, I'm sure. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Now that concludes the official greetings, and now it's my honor to invite Professor Alejandro Morguia, Poet Laureate of San Francisco, to the podium to present today's reading. Thank you very much. Muchas gracias. I want to take the opportunity today to welcome President Wong and Phyllis Wong to San Francisco, the city of poets. We are truly fortunate to gather today when so much of the world is racked with violence, intolerance, 
prejudice, hate, hopelessness. Poetry is also prophecy, and is, it is the duty of the poet to prophesize, invoke, conjure a better world. The word in Spanish for hope is esperanza. I am very humbled to offer a poem for you today titled Esperanzas to have many hopes. Now, if I can just pull the poem out. <coughs> <coughs> the last time I tried this, I pulled up a parking ticket. <laughs> Esperanzas. <coughs> For Pachamama and her oceans and her rivers and her forest. Who will speak for the salmon? For the soldier and the soldier's widow. For the one in jail and for the one that waits for the one in jail. For the lovers kept apart by laws and prejudices. Para las mujeres de Juarez. For the women of Gaza. For the women of Rwanda. For the village of Fukushima. For those persecuted and tortured because they spoke up. For the refugee wrapped in barbed wire. For each and every human being who sleeps in a street or park or hovel. For the sleepless student drowning in debt. For the family of that student drowning in debt. For the child with nostalgia to be born. For every child to get home safe. For the elderly alone. For the permanent end of hate, disease, and poverty. For a more just world still to come. Where no one goes hungry and the water is clean. Prisons are outlawed and schools are free and exciting, and poetry mandatory <clears throat> for police and politicians, for the Kunsu and Awa Indians of the Amazon and the Jaguar faced with extinction, for the last battle to stop and every last gun forged into a pen, for the most desperate, most hopeless in this world those without even dreams to get by. We embrace you today and surround you in a rainbow of hope. Muchas gracias. Thank you, Pres Professor Morgia. Presenting today's keynote address is Dr. Douglas Roberts. Dr. Roberts is a professor and director of Michigan State University's Institute for Public Policy and Social Research, an organization that works as a bridge between the Michigan State University campus and the community, building relationships between the academic community and public policy makers. Dr. Roberts has a distinguished career in public service spanning nearly three decades, including appointments to the administration of five governors. That would be unique in California now, wouldn't it? <laughs> he has served the state of Michigan in a number of capacities, including director of the state uh, Senate Fiscal Agency, deputy director of the State Department of Management and Budget, acting director of the Department of Management and Budget, De Deputy Superintendent of Department of Education, and 10 years as, Mich as Michigan State Direct, uh, Treasurer. Sorry. He also served as a member of the Board of Trustees at Northern Michigan University, where he first met Les Wong. Please welcome uh, Dr. Douglas Roberts for his address.
Mr. Chairman, thank you very much for a very kind and gracious introduction. Good afternoon. No, that's not strong enough. It is a magnificent afternoon. Some of my remarks today you will have already heard because we're talking about the same people. But I do have a prepared text, and it, I would like to present it to you at this time. Distinguished members of the San Francisco State University family, trustees, community government and business leaders, faculty, staff, alumni, and students, it is my privilege and my honor to be invited to make a few remarks at the investiture of Les Wong as your new president. I was a member of the Northern Michigan University Board of Trustees when we selected Les to become Northern's president. Les and I worked together for seven years, and it didn't take long for us to become close friends. I hope that you can appreciate what a special moment it is for me to be here today to share a very special moment with President Wong and his family. As we gather to formally mark the beginning of President Wong's tenure here at San Francisco State, I want to tell you about the kind of man Les Wong is and how he will be a dynamic and constructive influence at your great university. But before I tell you about my friend Les, I want to make something very clear. It is not my intent to give him a letter of recommendation. I mean, you've already hired him. <laughs> but it is my intent to state without reservation that you have selected wisely. President Wong grew up in the rough and tumble world of East Oakland. Not my words, his. As he grew up, he discovered that he had two significant attributes. He could hit a baseball, and he was a good reader. Lucky for us, he chose the latter in leading the way to his future career in higher education. And what a career it has been. He has served universities in North Dakota, Colorado, Washington State, and of course, Michigan. He is a man that believes that campus and community support each other and that he is destined to serve both. He is relentless in the pursuit of access, of inclusion, and of the opportunity for all people in the world to pursue higher education. He is not a man to sit high above in an ivory tower. At Northern, he regularly spent evenings and late nights with students just to talk and listen. Of course, there was almost always a five-gallon container of chocolate ice cream involved. <laughs> he also has a very big heart. Let me quote from one of his own speeches to the students at Northern Michigan. Learn and prepare yourself to act on behalf of others before you act on behalf of yourself. And later in the same speech, he said, believe in the power of kindness. These words reflect a man with remarkable character. President Wong is truly a remarkable man. He does have a secret, however. And some of you may already know about his secret, and I'm sure you do. And I can state his secret in one word. Phyllis, his wife. She is charming, delightful, and self-sacrificing. She epitomizes what one woman can do on her own time, unselfishly working to assist and honor students in their quest for a meaningful education. As you will discover if you have not already, Les and Phyllis are a remarkable team. Today's ceremony marks the beginning of a new chapter in the story of San Francisco State University. It is also intended to acknowledge and congratulate the man who will open new paths, transform lives, and lead the university through this new chapter. Mr. President, 
you have my most heartfelt congratulations. I am very proud of you. The university community itself have shown great pride by coming together to celebrate an entire presidential investiture week. This is a week of service, performance, and scholarship, and fun. This is very much in keeping with the spirit and character of your new president's commitment to campus and community. Now I'd like to lighten up just a little and have a little fun myself. Let's start by comparing President Wong's former home at Northern Michigan University with his new home here at San Francisco State. <laughs> the two cities are very different. Northern Michigan University is located in Marquette, Michigan. And Marquette is located in what we in Michigan call the UP, the Upper Peninsula. The city is on the banks of Lake Superior, not exactly the Pacific Ocean, but a great lake nonetheless. <laughs> Marquette has a population of about 20,000 people. San Francisco, about 800,000 people. I don't think Marquette has had 800,000 different residents in its entire history. <laughs> On the other hand, Marquette averages about 13 feet of snow per year. Let me emphasize, 13 feet of snow per year. Snowfall in San Francisco, not so much. <laughs> the last time San Francisco's financial district recorded even an inch of snow was in 1932. Very different cities, but the schools have more in common than meets the eye. Both schools were founded in 1899. The best research available tells us that all students in the first graduating class at both schools were women. Both schools have had five name changes over the years. Four of the five names were almost identical. <laughs> Let me drive that point home. The schools both started as, quote, normal state schools. San Francisco State Normal School, Northern Michigan Normal School. Both schools became state teachers' colleges and then state colleges, and finally both are state universities. But there's even some more interesting parallels. President Wong left Northern Michigan University last summer during Northern's 113th year of operation. President Wong arrived here last summer during the 113th year of operation of San Francisco State. President Wong left Northern Michigan as his 13th president. And you know, he arrived here as his 13th president. <laughs> What does all this research tell us? <laughs> I believe it tells us two things. First, it tells us that President Wong belongs here. It is as if it were written in the stars. And second, it tells us that if it is not already true, President Wong's favorite number should be 13. <laughs> now getting back. I know firsthand that Les and Phyllis are both professionally and personally excited to be here. Professionally, it is the opportunity of a lifetime. San Francisco State has three times the number of students as its last post and is located in a city of great culture and great beauty. The move from Northern to San Francisco represents change. And change is clearly what we face in the world today. And we are changing at what sometimes seems to be light speed. As a teenager, Star Trek was one of my favorite TV shows. Captain James T. Kirk would reach into his pocket 
flip open his communicator and make history with the phrase, Scotty, beam me up. Dr. McCoy would wave his tricorder over a patient for an instant diagnosis. It was called a tricorder. Granted, we are not yet beaming people around. But we all have cell phones and MRIs can diagnose with a simple scan. When I entered college in the fall of 1965, I used a slide rule to help with calculations. In my second term, I used a handheld calculator. From a slide rule to a handheld calculator to cell phones, smartphones, iPhones, tablets, and now the BlackBerry 10. <laughs> that is our world today. I know many of you have similar histories and can understand that change is now the new normal. We are living in a time of both collaboration and conflict, a time of both great challenges and great joy. We are living in a time of transition, from a time when we believed many things to be impossible, to a time when we question whether anything is impossible. Most of all, we are living in a time when we can identify society's needs and problems and celebrate our ability to solve those problems. The question for this group is what is the role of the university community in providing leadership in working through these problems? I have seen the university from different points of view. I've seen it as a student, as a state official, a trustee, and now as a professor. Each point of view contributed to an enhanced appreciation of the enormous responsibility that the university community has in influencing our society and the world we live in. And while we constantly strive for social, economic, and world solutions, the same basic questions remain. What should be taught? Who should teach it? Who should it be taught to? And who should pay for it? The answers will have a major impact on our economic growth, our social justice, our public health. The solutions will reach to the very core of our society. In today's world, students will need to learn much more than basic skills. They will need to learn to be resourceful. They will learn to be adaptable and they will learn to be compassionate. To those who will lead our universities fall awesome responsibilities. Leaders tend to provide the inspiration that drives everyone to learn more. Our nation's sixth president, John Quincy Adams, is said to have given us these enduring words on the qualities of leadership. If your actions inspire others to dream more, learn more, do more, and become more, you are a leader. Universities will need the very best leadership possible. Les Wong is one of those leaders. My final comments are directed to my dear friend. Mr. President, you have the tools at your disposal to make a difference. You have great instincts. You have wonderful judgment. You have a keen intellect. And you have extraordinary compassion. Take these tools, Mr. President, and lead San Francisco State University to a magnificent new chapter promoting a safer and more just society for all. Thank you, and congratulations, Mr. President. The athletic department just ran out of here real quick to look for that number 13 jersey, I'm sure. <laughs> Thank you, Dr. Roberts. Now I have the pleasure of recognizing Professors Zacharias, Rafilio, and Fred Lef Lefsitz, Paul Yarborough, Alexander Wilson, 
Though collect, known collectively as the Alexander String Quartet, San Francisco State's internationally acclaimed quartet in residence. They will be joined by the San Francisco State Morrison Center Student Ensemble, the Holloway String Quartet, in performance. Thank mm -hmm. you. 
What, what wonderful musical talent do we have? Let's give them one more round of applause, please. Now it's my honor to recognize Dr. Timothy White, Chancellor of the California State University. President Wong, Chair Lynchide, ladies and gentlemen, the Honorable Willie Brown, perhaps I, White, can join you, Brown, and go to Sacramento to change the dialogue about the value of public higher education. <laughs> we'll be known as the Mocha Brothers. Brothers have nothing on us. <laughs> it's a profound honor as your new chancellor to invest Les Wong as San Francisco State University's 13th president. As you've heard, President Wong has a strong background in working collaboratively in a public university settings. He's focused on students. He's focused on the learning and creative environment provided by a strong faculty. He is very supportive and enabling of staff who are vital to the success of our university. He is also a strategic thinker, an innovator, who has the skills to help this university navigate the path ahead, one of great change, one of great opportunity, and one of profound importance to our quality of life, our economic development, and the social mobility of our people. But most importantly, he understands San Francisco State and he is passionate about improving the close ties and impact that this institution has with its greater community. I know that as Bay Area natives, he and Phyllis consider being here a true homecoming, and that they will be careful, thoughtful, and progressive stewards of this wonderful campus. Will President Wong and Trustee Lynchide please join me? You guys move over just a little bit. <laughs> Give me my space. <laughs> by the authority granted in me by the trustees of the California State University, I hereby invest you with the Office of President of San Francisco State University with all the honors the privileges, and most importantly, the authority, responsibility, and accountability pertaining thereto. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in welcoming President Les Wong. I was trying to talk them into designing a baseball cap for me. That <laughs> might have been more appropriate. Chancellor White trustees, my fellow university presidents, a great faculty, a great staff, an incredible alumni base, 
San Francisco State advocates, and all who have been touched by the magic that is San Francisco State University. Thank you for such a warm welcome. Most importantly, to all of our students, thank you for continuing to give me hope and assurance that our dreams and expectations about your future and this country will continue to be my driving inspiration. I've watched San Francisco State students dance, act, sing, and create the most incredible music. I've seen them work in our science labs and with the children and young people of San Francisco. Students planted trees with me, they ran 5K with me, and quite a few of you danced in the quad with me. <laughs> I've heard student leadership speak loudly and intelligently about affordable housing, sustainability, low tuition, and accessible classes, campus safety, and access to quality faculty. I have seen this campus walk the talk of social justice. I've also seen a three-quarter court buzzer beater against a nationally ranked team, a towering home run by a Lady Gator also against a nationally ranked team, and soon we'll welcome home a national champion in wrestling. These are but a few examples of my passion to see student performance in and out of the classroom. I can't imagine a career away from a university campus, and what a delight to be on this campus. I want to welcome the many friends and my family from throughout this wonderful country. I have had the incredible good fortune to work among the best educators on this planet. Our adventures through the state of Washington, Colorado, North Dakota, Michigan's glorious Upper Peninsula, and now home in this incredible city by the bay, where it all started for the two of us. Well, the only phrase I can think of is how fortunate I have been to have Phyllis with me. How fortunate I have been to be near some of the greatest minds and some of the greatest teachers. How fortunate I am that our boys and their families inspire my passion for the future. And how fortunate I am that the students I have had around me, and especially those here at San Francisco State University, are as eager as I am to keep looking ahead. I share their optimism. I've been fortunate to be in the business of higher education, well, more than 30, but less than 100 years. <laughs> Upon reflection, I can't imagine being a university president where hope and expectation can ever be compromised by despair and stupidity. But I don't want to get into reflections about where I've been. Good fortune has blessed many of my steps. But I want to adhere to Satchel Paige's admi admonition, don't look back, something might be gaining on you. Today is about the future. It is about our work with students, it is about our work with ideas and experiences that will change and improve the lives of our students, just as their work will change all of our lives in deep and meaningful ways. I'd like to talk about the future, knowing full well that the effort of an incredible faculty and staff, coupled with the energy of our students, will have a far greater bearing on the future than anything I could imagine at this point in time. Looking ahead is a pretty risk-intensive activity, but bear with me because what follows is less about prediction than it is about awareness. And I promise that the word budget, as I just said it, will be the only time you will hear it in my remarks today. My senses tell me that the mix and complexity of issues and challenges ahead will sound quite like an old record played on a new machine. That is, the problems won't surprise us. 
They haven't gone away, and like an old song, we may remember the melody and not the name. But there's a new duo in town who promises to take their act to Sacramento and make that change. <laughs> to set up my main point, I'd like to take two examples, quite simple ones, to get at an idea that has been dogging me for some time. And when I tell you the two examples, it's okay for you to think, hmm, where is he going with this? My two examples are love and hunger. Yes, love and hunger. Now remember, it's my investiture, and I have you trapped in here. <laughs> so please be patient, listen, and give it a chance to do a little thinking. Love. I wonder if the explosion of dating and matchmaking services will resolve an issue about which Shakespeare wrote so eloquently. In today's blistering world of technology, apps, smartphones, a lot of dull phones, and iPhones, we still write about love and read about it on paper and even on our iPads and Kindles. Some of those stories come with illustrations. These love stories will be seen by a far greater proportion of the world's society, whether in print or movie form. Yes, we love to read about love. We have become a technological society who will compile an even greater volume of statistics about love, will conduct and publish research, and even in some cases, nowadays, many cases, will hook people up in the name of love through technology. That much stuff about love has led to speed dating and many other more nefarious dating games. There are a zillion pieces of software and apps that help you look for, find, and enjoy the person with whom you hope to love. There is so much out there about and are related to love, I hope nobody in here ever hears the following. Quote, with 98% confidence derived from an assortment of validated measures at the .001 level, we are a match. <laughs> and if we date 2.34, more times, we should consider marriage <laughs> and perhaps have children if our confidence measure goes up another 0.345. <laughs> I think a well-chosen poem is far more effective. Better yet, a game at AT&T. Technology, as good as it is, will not mediate nor clarify the fundamentals of love. The danger is that we begin to see the technical process and the numbers and the anecdotes and mistake them for meaningful knowledge about love. That is, it is too easy to mistake volumes of data and literature for understanding the phenomena. You might expect me to say, well, love will always be a mystery, or that we write more about those things we least understand. Now, that's too romantic. If we don't come up with a much better and dynamic understanding of human relationships known as love, the cost can be painfully high. It is not a stretch of the imagination that the bizarre and catastrophic gun attacks we witnessed result from a complex mix of psychological issues about love and relationships and, for example, gun availability, which we need to understand much better today than we ever have in the past. My point here is that we need to cut through the mass of stuff and not be afraid to ask better questions. We need to think out of the box on so fundamental an issue as love. Okay, enough about love. 
Let's talk about hunger. You would think by now that we would be able to feed and care for a greater proportion of the human population than we do today. Shamefully, even in the United States, access to the fundamentals of a basic diet on a regular basis remains a challenge for too many of our fellow citizens. And it makes you think deeply about what our responsibility is to the least fortunate in our country. Surely, to eat and live free of fear would rank up there. We have thought deeply about feeding each other, and I suspect we know how to do it, and the solutions have been known to us for some time. But variables unrelated to food production and distribution stand in the way. Okay, don't worry. I'm not going to review that work here today. Let's just reiterate a point. We need to think out of the box on this issue, too. The point I am getting at is the box which we need to think our way out of may not even exist. Maybe it's within our abilities as educators to ask students, here's how others have constructed the box. You have a choice and the opportunity to allow yourself to A, believe that you are in the box and feel comfortable. And yes, it's okay to be in some boxes. Or two, begin to understand your need to figure out how to get out of the box. Or three, you can take this education you're getting at San Francisco State University and learn how to throw the box away or deny its existence or even have the strength to ignore the box. Now, of course, the correct answer, students, is three. Now, if you got this one right, and I won't ask you if you did, you must now commit yourself to an educated life, which I tell my students is characterized by dangerous thinking. Throwing away the box, denying it or ignoring it, takes the willingness to engage a very dangerous idea. Namely, through this education, it will force you, perhaps challenge you, to think better, to think differently, and to think without fear. And there will be considerable forces who don't want you to have this kind of power. The San Francisco State University education will give you the power to throw the box away, to deny it, to ignore it, or better, to change it. But an effective education is a prerequisite. Without this education, the walls of the box are thick and greasy, and the grip of those who don't want you to leave the box is firm. A university education, at its most fundamental and most powerful way, provides each participant the skills and ideas to challenge the box that everyone believes you must be in. But there is another layer to this metaphor. Your education will give you the power to choose the box you want to be in. This university education has to be challenging and rigorous, so that you can free yourself from the box with vigor and intelligence. And I've become sensitive to what we do so well here at San Francisco State, and I am sure that if we remember the following guides, our students, more than most, will not be trapped in a box. For example, a San Francisco State University education must be relevant so that you can be taken seriously. A San Francisco State University education must be inspiring because there will be times when only you see certain outcomes and dangers and you'll need the courage to speak up and to resist. A San Francisco State University education should be genuine 
because we owe our students the truth, not only about their performance, but the means by which they can become better people. And a San Francisco State University education is about becoming your best, and not as we see it, but as students define it. You can see that I get pretty spiritual about a university education that is student-based, challenging, rigorous, inspiring, and liberating. Owning your own mind comes at a price, and it requires significant effort. And I am not saying that students and professors should destroy the important conceptual frameworks that may very well be needed. But we do need to nurture creativity, insight, and self-direction. San Francisco State University is pretty good at this, and I believe that is why we are among the best universities on this planet. We foster in our students the passion to step free of boxes for all the right reasons and motives. In closing, my expectation is that a university education at San Francisco State University helps students confront life's challenges their way. It would be too easy for me to, to think or to refer to an old Frank Sinatra song about, let's do it my way. That would have been cool if only I could sing. <laughs> but owning your own mind is about leaving some of these traditional and unwanted boxes behind. I believe our students will put those boxes behind them, and if they do it, I also believe that success leads them to make a meaningful difference in the lives of others while making a meaningful difference in their own life. It's a very simple maxim for me because I firmly believe that making a difference in the lives of others enriches our own in ways that no machine, no software, no app could ever do. And the romantic part of me says, who knows, love can't be far behind. That is the power of a university education, the power to help students own their own mind. Now, I'll close by thanking all of you for listening to my addiction about students and a university education. I'll close with what I think comes closest to how I have thought about the future of San Francisco State University and the students and the faculty and the staff who define this great university. If it sounds too simple or too common for our great endeavor, I apologize. But it is one way I think about my passion for what I do. Again, back to Satchel Page. Less known, but more relevant to me, he is reported to have said, I ain't never had a job. I just always played baseball. For me, I have never had a job. I just always taught. Sometimes our deepest passions are fulfilled in the simplest ways. I am deeply humbled by today by the presence of so many good and brilliant minds who share my passion for learning and for students. I never would have believed that so many people would honor a simple kid from Oakland. Thank you. I want to rededicate myself to the students of San Francisco State University and to the generations of people who will help our students escape the box. Every bit of gratitude deservedly goes to my wife Phyllis, my boys, their wives, and my grandchildren. They are my box, which I protect, my family who keeps my passions alive. To the students of San Francisco State University, I expect you all to cut a more meaningful 
a more meaningful path than I have. That is the greatness of a university like San Francisco State University. Thank you all. Thank you, President Wong. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that concludes our ceremony. President Wong will lead a recessional, and we ask that you remain seated until we all have exited the theater. Please join us in the Jack Adams Hall, located next door in the Cesar Chavez Student Center for a reception immediately following this event. Who knows, we may convince him to sing My Way by Frank Sinatra. <laughs> we look forward to seeing you all at the reception. Thank you.